share my drive. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, can we start, Prof. Gerard? Let me share my screen also. Okay. okay. Okay, uh, class, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Prof. Gerard, for uh, being here. Yeah, uh, I want to introduce our um, guest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will share his uh, short curriculum vitae. Yeah. Uh, now we have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Gerard Guangan. Yeah. Dr. Gerard is an uh, Associate Professor in the Faculty of Business, Multimedia University, Malaysia. Uh, he read for his Master of Arts Communication and Doctor of Philosophy at University Saints, Malaysia, and Master of Business Information Technology and Bachelor of Information Technology at the University of Southern Queensland, Australia. His research interests are in knowledge management, information system, environmental sustainability, business management, heritage tourism, wow, and mass communication. He has published over 50 journals, articles, book chapters, and conference papers in these areas. Now, um, uh, Prof. Gerald, here we have uh, students from management and entrepreneurship subject. Uh, we invite you because we want to enhance our knowledge and gain some outlooks. Uh, how can we find opportunities and uh, face um, some challenges in uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Uh, class, uh, we have uh, 45 minutes for the presentations. And after that, we have 20 minutes to have discussions with uh, Prof. Gerard. Uh, Prof. Gerard, uh, I think uh, you can start your presentation right now. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, it's very nice to be here and it's really, really a pleasure to be to be here this morning with all of you here okay, at, at your university for this uh, short session that we'll be having. Okay, so uh, I'll be sharing my, my slide. Are you able to see it, Dr. Siti? Yes, we can okay. see it. Okay, so uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, the title of, of what I'll be talking about today is about IR 4.0, Challenges and Opportunities, okay? I believe uh, we have actually uh, heard about IR 4.0. You would have studied about it uh, in your classes, okay? And now you are doing the uh, management uh, management class, okay, uh, this this trimester or term, okay, so you'll be exposed to the ideas of uh, IR 4.0 in your class and also in, in your program, okay. So, uh, I felt that it is a very, very, it's, it is a, it's a good opportunity for us to explore some of the concepts regarding IR 4.0. So basically, we'll be looking at what is IR 4.0, uh, the challenges that uh, we have in view of this, and opportunities. And also, uh, more importantly, I would like to share a bit about how students like, uh, like you will be better positioned for the future, okay, by equipping yourselves with skills, okay, and knowledge, okay to embrace okay, the challenges of IR 4.0. Because IR 4.0 has actually a, a very, very, uh, has, has made okay, a very, very significant impact on the way things operate around us. Okay? So um, in future years, okay, what we have studied, okay, what we are studying now, okay, and what you are studying now may not be fully relevant anymore. So the mindset that, that uh, all of us have we need to change okay, to, to ensure that we can keep up with the pace okay, of development and also the requirements of industry and requirements of um, future careers. Okay? So just uh, thank you, Dr. Siti Aziza Amir, for introducing me. Okay? So now I'd like to just 
quickly briefly introduce where I come from. So I'm working in multimedia university in Malaysia, or in short, people call us MMU. So multimedia university is Malaysia's first private university. We were set up approximately 25 years ago. So we are relatively very, very young. Okay. Um, before, before MMU was established, there was no private university in Malaysia. Okay. All the universities were by the government. Okay. Uh, but the, the government at that time felt that it was time for Malaysia to start uh, the idea of having a private university. And we were uh, established, uh, we were invited by the government to set up the first private university. And our role okay, at, in MMU was to ensure that we came up with the skills that the country needed. Okay? Not so much of uh, uh, the, the, the normal engineering programs or business programs and so on and so forth, but the role of uh, our university is to provide new skills, future skills, that the, that the country needed for development. So um, I think all of you would have uh, would be very familiar with Kuala Lumpur and you see the Kuala Lumpur city center, the Twin Towers, the two Jagong or whatever. A lot, a lot, a lot of, of my friends from Indonesia, Indonesia will refer to the Twin Towers as the Twin uh, Jagong, so Jagong Kemba, okay? So uh, the Twin Towers is actually uh, the gateway to the multimedia super corridor in Malaysia. So the multimedia super corridor is a is a national project to develop uh, manufacturing and research and development in the country, so that it could help the country to be uh, more developed in terms of the economic uh, progress and also in terms of technology. So MMU is located in the heart of uh, this project. So we are we are seen to be like the uh, nucleus of this entire endeavor or effort in the country to develop, uh, to help develop Malaysia, okay? And to ensure that the new, new companies that set up in Malaysia have got the skills and, 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 and the employees that are, that are required to get the job done. So basically, uh, we came up with a lot of very new programs, okay, that actually uh, were very, very different from from what were being offered by other universities, okay? And we keep on trying to ensure that our programs that we offer are catering to the requirements of the future industries. So we have approximately 13,000 students. We are a medium-sized university and we specialize in digital, okay? Innovative and creative uh, programs. So, for example, I think um, you you all may, may be familiar with uh, some of the cartoon animated series like Upin Ipin, okay, Boba Boy, and so on, okay. All this has had its roots in MMU, okay. They, like Boba Boy is actually uh, produced by our alumni, okay. So, a lot of the creative um, content in, in, in Malaysia and in the region, okay, had its uh, connections with MMU. So, MMU actually was very, very, uh, it's now actually very, very, um, prominent in terms of the multimedia industry in the film industry because we have got a very we have got very very interesting film programs okay in in in, in the university and uh, things like uh, business accounting okay and all, all the various uh, computing programs and engineering programs which are focusing on the needs of the future industries so like for example we also have programs like um, law in, 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 the, in the university, but the law program uh, focuses on technologies. So the, the, the students that, that, that come out from our law program, they are very, very flown with technology and they are very, very aware of the technological implications uh, 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 towards law and how law can be applied to these areas. Okay, so these are some of the interesting things that we have. And uh, basically, MMU is a very is relatively a different university in terms of our DNA compared to the other universities that we have in the country. And uh, if you can see the picture there, uh, that's that's a picture of one of our campuses. We have got two campuses. So this is our campus in Cyberjaya. 
which is which is quite a nice campus. Okay, so uh, I do welcome all of you. If, if, if you have a chance, once the borders open and so on, please feel free. Okay, to let us know if you like to 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 pay us a visit or or have or have activities. Okay, with us, I we welcome you with open arms. Okay, thank you. So, uh, what is IR four point zero? Okay, IR four point zero or the fourth industrial revolution. Okay involves the digital transformation of the industry okay and what are we look, talking about this transformation is basically the integration okay and digitalization okay of all industrial processes that make up the value chain so when when we have um, businesses or manufacturing operations or whatever okay or whatever business processes or even uh, production processes okay there are very there are various um, components of this uh, of this uh, value chain okay, and they make up the value chain so with a uh, digital transformation okay uh, we are able to digitize the entire uh, value chain that we have so for example uh, when we now with now with the pandemic most of us purchase things online okay so when we purchase things online if you look if you compare what we have now with perhaps five years ago the environment has changed a lot in terms of online purchases. So if you buy uh, something on Shopee, for example, okay, or Lazada, the, the tracking process okay, the, from the point of uh, the, the, the seller uh, receiving your order, okay, the, the process of you making payment, making the order, making the payment using your credit card or using your bank, uh, account okay entering your bank de details your 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 number reckoning and so on into the, in, 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 into the system to to make the payment for the product whether the the, the, the seller has prepared your product has packed your product when it's shipped out okay then it will it, then you'll be able to see the the, the progress or the or, or, or of your of your package okay from the seller to the to the warehouse okay or to the or the sorting center and coming uh on the way to you okay so basically uh, all these all these process processes in the past okay were a black box 10 years ago five years ago okay we were not able to know where is our package we know that we, we order something is coming coming to us we don't know where is it is it stuck somewhere or whatever we wouldn't know it no know all this but with we, 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 with the advancements that we have okay with technologies now everything is at our fingertips when we go to our dashboard in shopee we'll be able to see the the progress of the order fulfillment has it been packed has it been shipped where is it now is it is it in jakarta or is or, or is it in bandung or whatever so where is this product okay and when will it receive and who receives this product so all this information, okay, uh, really speaks, uh, enhances the buying experiences that we have, okay, for example, using uh, Shopee. And also it really, really uh, enables, okay, better efficiency. For example, when we buy things on, on, online, okay, we will be able to get the products within a, a specific time frame, okay, normally within um, three or four days, okay three or four days you'll be able to get the, the product shipped to you, okay? Now, uh, in some cases, it may be even faster. In the past, okay, when we buy things online, it may take a long time for these products to arrive because uh, the, the, the platform, okay, providers were not able to control and manage uh, the sellers well, okay? What do I mean by this? For example, now, the moment the, the order is made, okay, the, the sellers are given a, a specific time frame, okay, a few days, one or two days or three days. Normally, they're given three days to, to ship the products and pack and ship the products. So, within that period, they need to ship and pack and ship the products. If they do not meet that, okay, uh, time frame, okay, what will happen then is that it will, it will affect their rating. Okay, and performance performance uh, evaluation by the platform, and that may 
affect okay, the operations of the seller. And at the same time, buyers, people like us, when we receive these products, if we find that the delivery is slow or whatever, we can wait that delivery process by giving stars and so on. So when a seller gets um, fewer stars, okay, don't get five. when a seller does not get five stars or four stars, okay, it will affect the person's uh, that the, the seller's okay opportunity to get more new buyers. Because when new buyers want to buy a product from 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 uh, from a seller, they would normally look at the uh, ratings and the reviews. So if the, if the ratings are low, people will be worried to buy from this new seller because it means that there may be something wrong. If the reviews are negative, then it tells us that there is problem with, with this seller. Okay, But all these are possible because of the digitalization that we have nowadays. Because everything is at our fingertips. Everything is automated. Okay. So this is one of the benefits that we can enjoy and we can, we can, we can clearly see from uh, IR 4.0, okay? Okay, so now we have IR 4.0, but uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of you would also know that we have but different industrial, industrial or industrial revolutions before this, okay? So in the 17,000 somethings, okay, we have got IR 1.0. This was mechanization, okay, steam power, the weaving loom, okay, I want to, 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 to produce uh, fabric and textiles, okay. Then in the 1870s, we have got the industry 2.0, where we have got the production lines, the mass production, assembly lines, okay, the use of energy for, for, for manufacturing. And in the 1960s and 70s, okay, we have got industry 3.0, okay. So in the uh, 60s and 70s, okay, that's when we have got automation. We have got uh, factories, okay, with a lot of automation, a lot of uh, machines in play, okay, a lot of computers and electronics are being used, okay, it in devices and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> with IR uh, 3.0, we saw factories, okay, being able to produce at higher capacity. The production volume was higher, okay? So production use were better with IR 3.0, okay? Then we have got uh, computers and electronics which resulted in equipment and devices becoming smaller and smaller, okay? So in the past, okay, uh, a TV would be so huge, okay? But now TVs are all flat screen and so all these are due to the technologies that uh, emerged from then, okay? And now for IR 4.0, okay, basically is the era of networks. Okay, networks rule the day. Okay, networks allow us to do a lot of things that was not possible in the past. Okay, for example, the example about uh, Shopee just now that I, that, that I shared with all of you, the ability to track your packages and so on, it can happen now because of networks, the ability of uh, the availability of reliable networks, okay, everywhere, okay, at the warehouse, uh, by the delivery partners and agents, okay, everyone has access to these networks, which was not possible in the past, okay. So these are some of the of the things that make IR four they are making IR four point zero possible, okay, and the Internet of Things, okay, the, the, the concept where all devices are being connected, for example. Last time, if you want to control, if, if for example, if you are traveling away for a holiday and you want to, you don't want your house to be dark, you don't want your house to be dark, okay? So you either turn on the switch, but the problem with the switch is that when you turn on the, the switch for the lights, okay, the lights will be on 24 hours, okay? Then uh, you'll be wasting electricity. So one way that people use okay to, to 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 manage the lights in the house would be to use timers okay and these are all mechanical timers so it'll be like a plug that you put on to your power socket and you set what time you want the light to go the, the, the light to go on and so on so that would be one way okay or, or another way would be to use a, a photo sensor to sense the light okay when it's dark then the the, the, the light will go on but nowadays, okay, 
using your mobile phone, using your mobile phone, your smartphone, you are able to control anything, okay? Because everything is connected to the network and the ability for, for people to control, okay, all these devices from your apps on your mobile phone is possible. So now I'm in Cyberjaya. My house is in Malacca, okay? So I can control uh, my... My 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 light my lighting in the house, okay, using the smart bulb. So I well, in a few places in my house I use smart bulbs, okay. So I'm able to control the color. I'm able to control the time that I want it on, okay. Then if I if I, I can I can set timer like normal, or I can even turn it on and off through the through, through the mobile phone remotely, provided that the networks are all in good order. So these are some of the challenge or of the opportunities that we have okay with IR 4.0 and if we look at IR 3.0 and IR 4.0 some of you may be asking both are manufacturing so what's the difference okay in IR 3.0 we have automation factories are producing in large quantities okay uh, assembly lines and uh production lines are producing around the clock, okay. The key word in industry 3.0 is mass production. Production is done at a very, very uh, massive scale. You have to produce in large quantities to be profitable. However, in IR 4.0, we have that assembly lines, we have that production lines, but it also allows for customization. That means if you want to, to, to produce a smaller quantity instead of 10,000 units or 100,000 units of, 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 of a product, you may want maybe 1,000 units. It's possible for that to happen and for customization to occur. Okay? So that means uh, clients or customers nowadays are able to request okay, for customization to their products okay and to get what they want okay at a, at, at the same price okay because in, in the past if i want to produce small quantities of uh, my product or whatever it will be too expensive it's not worth not possible to do that but now with industry 4.0 uh, we are, uh, the machines are able to customize quickly you know and you can do the settings and so on and as a result it's possible for production to go on for lower number of quantities, okay, at almost the same price. So this allows a lot of customization to occur, okay. And as a result, okay, um, there is more, uh, what you call this, more uh, diversity in, in, in the production and customers, okay, enjoy, okay, uh, better services. But it poses, this poses challenges to uh, manufacturers because they need to have these technologies and they need to have the ability to meet the needs and requirements of the customers. Okay. Okay, these are some of the key principles that we have, okay, in uh for for IR 4.0. Okay. So I will just quickly uh, uh run through these uh key principles with you. Okay, so basically um for IR 4.0, okay, systems are interoperable, okay? That means the devices are able to communicate with each other. So things are being built on a common platform, okay? And we are able to ensure that uh, devices are able to communicate and we are able, okay, to uh, use them, okay, um, in our production processes uh, effectively, okay? Decentralization. Over here, okay, uh, in the past, things you tend to be centralized. Everything must be controlled by, by the central um, operations and so on. But we, okay, IR 4.0, okay, we're looking at ways to decentralize control, okay? That means we are able to let uh, users or small departments or units, okay, make decisions, okay, that they want to make without having to uh, go through uh, the, the central uh, control or whatever, okay? Now, 
The third one is something which is very, very uh, widely used and very, very important and prominent in IR 4.0. What we have now is that we have a uh, real-time analytics. Okay. Real-time analytics, uh, basically, okay, uh, we collect whenever we, we do any production or any activity, we have data. We collect data. Okay. So this data okay, needs to be put to good use. Whatever data that we collect, we need to actually analyze this data and utilize this data. Okay. So in real-time analytics, what, what happens over here is that the data that we gather okay, from our daily operations, from manufacturing, whatever it may be from purchases online okay, or uh, screen time use, all these data okay, uh, will be collected and they will be analyzed. Okay? They'll be analyzed okay? and with this uh, analysis of this data, okay, it allows us to monitor, okay, control and optimize processes. So uh, nowadays, okay, uh, in the industries, okay, and also in employment market, there is a huge demand for people who can do data analytics. I think, I think in, in Indonesia, okay, there is also a demand for 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 graduates who have got data analytics skills. Okay, in Malaysia, uh, the demand is very very high because uh, data analytics, okay, is very very important. Okay, now because companies have a lot of data, but they need the skills of people to be able to analyze the data, to get meaning from the data, to see what, what is happening and what can we do to improve okay, from the data that we get. And the, the, mo the most important element of this data analytics is that it is done real time. It is done real time. So the real time analytics allows us to see what is happening now, okay, so that we are able to uh, take action fast. So, so we, do, we are not talking about data that we collect and we analyze one year later. We, we are not looking at that normal timeline that we had in the past, okay, whereby it takes months to analyze data, which, is, which makes, it, makes it rather pointless. So now with real-time analytics, we are able to get the data as we get it and analyze that data immediately or as quickly as possible so that we are able to make decisions fast, okay? So like for example, uh, Shopee, the example that I said before, they will be able to see who are the sellers who are not uh, packing or, 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 or shipping out the, 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 the products fast, okay? So they will be able to monitor these, uh, these so-called uh, sellers, okay? And then they'll be able to, and also, okay, for example, like for the for the uh, Uber, Grab, okay, and, and I believe in, in Indonesia, you, you have Gojek and so on. There are a lot of analytics on the riders, okay, and the drivers, okay. So as a result, okay, uh, the companies are able to see who are the riders, okay, who are having issues in terms of service and so on. So like, uh, for example, like Grab in Malaysia, if, let, if a particular uh, driver gets a lot, uh, a lot of uh, uh, poor feedback. Okay, the rating, the number of stars is low, maybe three stars or four stars. That rider, okay, will be or driver will be disadvantaged. How? So, for example, if I'm looking, if I'm booking a, a ride now, I go into my app, I book for my ride. The the there may be a lot of uh, cars around me, or grab cars around me, okay, waiting for, 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 my, for my booking. But, okay, those uh, drivers, okay, with higher rating scores, okay, they will be able to get my, my, my booking, okay, they will be able to see my booking faster than the other people, okay, than the other people with lower rating scores. So that helps them, okay, to, to get the business faster, okay, and get right faster and earn more money. So that is a, a way that uh, some of the companies use, okay, to motivate, to mo motivate uh, 
their workers, okay, like for the Grab drivers and so on to motivate. But also for Grab, okay, there are a lot of models, whether uh, they, they are auto assigned or they can choose or whatever. These are various models that they have. But in, in short, okay, just to make things simple, that is how the real time analytics, okay, uh, data, they okay, will be able to actually uh, ensure that uh, the operations of Grab improves. People are happy with Grab because if customers are not happy with Grab, then they will find another provider. Okay, so with real time analytics, okay, Grab is able to manage to manage how they uh, they prioritize certain rider drivers or so on and so forth. Okay, uh, virtualization. Okay. Over here, uh, basically, what happens now? Okay, if, 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 if in the past, in the past, okay, I think some of you uh, students are, 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 will, will not have experienced this. Okay, for for those of us who are older, okay, like me and maybe some of your lecturers, okay, uh, the computers that we had in the past are all very very big and bulky. Okay, so when we talk about computers, computers are very very big devices very very uh, heavy okay and also um, very very low capacity okay but nowadays okay and 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 when we talk about data storage now we're talking about terabytes okay in during during my time when i was studying in the university and so and, and so on we talk about megabytes okay megabytes if you get a few megabytes you'll be happy at that time now you get terabytes and you and we are still not satisfied. Okay, so in 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 the past, if we want to store data and so on, we need to use. Okay, we need to carry uh, storage devices. Okay, if we kept the hard disk or the heavy, if we don't want that, then we will have our this this and so on. Okay, so we will be carrying a lot of these uh, devices. Okay, with us. Okay, to to store our data. Okay, but nowadays, okay. Um, in terms of processing, in terms of data storage, everything is on, on, on the cloud. Everything is available online. Okay, so uh, the, the the machine power, the storage capacity, need not be with us physically. It is all out there in the cloud. You click, you click this this location on your computer, you get access to your data. If you need processing power or whatever or services. You click, you, you, you get access or, or on the cloud, okay? Those services, those apps and so on. So as a result of it, we have an era of virtualization, okay? Whereby um, a lot of things, okay, are available at our fingertips and not necessarily physically with us, okay? And the use of sensors and also systems and, and so on and so forth are able to help uh, companies, okay, uh, operate, uh, more cheaply and more uh, efficiently with all this. Okay. Now, uh, service orientation. Okay. If we look at uh, at how businesses operate nowadays, okay, the focus on on providing good service is very very prominent. Okay. The main focus nowadays is giving good service. To people and also uh, excellent service, okay, um, to to customers, okay. So the same goes for manufacturing lines, okay. Uh, we the service orientation is very very uh, important, okay. And the last principle that I would like to just touch on is about modularity and scalability. With IR four point zero, everything becomes more scalable and more flexible. Okay, so it is not no longer rigid like what I said just now. Okay, um, with with, with IR four point zero, okay, you can produce smaller quantities, customize those quantities. So there is a lot of flexibility and um, ability to meet the need the, the needs of, of, of the customers. Okay, and we can scale the production and op op and operations in accordance with the technical requirements and the demand in each business case in each area so as a result of it okay customers are happy uh, businesses are also able to do it in the past okay businesses wanted to to to, to do all these but they are not able to because the technology does not allow for such thing to happen okay
Okay, so like last time, okay, if you want to print a shirt, for example, the the the, the cost of uh printing a shirt, a t-shirt or whatever, is very expensive because you have to make the the the, the mold first, okay, and you need to uh, to set the design first, and the cost of making that uh design mold is very very expensive and the only way for you to get a t-shirt printing which is cheap is to get quantity so if you print if you print 200 500 1000 then the price will go down but if you want 50 pieces 100 pieces the price will be very very expensive because of the technology at that time but now with ir 4.0 and all these uh, uh various concepts that we have that we just talk about it's possible for, 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 for companies and um, factories okay, to produce okay, as per the requirements of customers okay, and at lower web, lower volume. Okay? Now, so what are the differences that we can see? Okay, so uh, traditional, okay, we work on mass, mass production. We produce in big quantities okay, in bulk. Whereas in IR 4.0, uh, with, with these technologies, factories are beginning to be able to customize based on customer requirements. So uh, customers may want specific requirements and so on. They're able to do that in a smaller quantity. Okay. Uh, in the past, we have got very huge factories. Okay. Big volumes of a specific product. Okay. Nowadays, okay. Uh, uh, industries are, are, look, are, are working on smart factories. Okay, smart factories with flexible uh, production at a competitive shop. Okay, at a sorry, at a competitive cost. Uh, I say shop because I'm thinking about a factory shop, okay, a machine shop. So what happens now is that uh, the idea or concept of a machine shop, okay, a machine shop is very very popular. Okay, whereby there is a like a, a, a small facility whereby you can use the facilities, you can rent the facilities for a few hours, half a day or one day or two days to produce what you want to produce, okay? So the idea of a machine shop is also uh, a result of IR 4.0, whereby the machines are able to, to, be, to be reconfigured, okay? To produce uh, various items, example, digital printing and so on and so forth. So, uh, Machine, machine shops, okay, is, or, 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 or a factory for higher or customizable factory, okay. These are the concepts that are, these are the uh, out, outcomes, okay, of IR 4.0, okay. So, for example, I think, I believe uh, in some universities, okay, we have got, we have got this. Uh, so, these are some of the, of the implementations, okay. Of, of, of IR 4.0, okay? So, uh, based, uh, in traditional industry, what happens is that we plan, okay, based on anticipation uh, of demand, okay, and also based on, on, on prediction that actually is actually, actually very, very challenging. However, nowadays with IR 4.0, production is pretty dynamic, okay, and it's based on actual demand. Last time you anticipate, Okay, you aga aga, who what is the demand that you will get? Okay, then then you produce. So if your estimation is wrong, then you have too much stock, and people won't be buying. But now, you produce based on the demand that, that you get. Okay, so it's more efficient, and there'll be lesser wastage. Okay, in the past, uh, in the traditional industry, we tend to pro to purchase products. But now, uh, people put, uh, purchase services. So everything is seen as a service, okay? So like last time, okay, if, if you want to uh, buy, uh, buy equipment or facilities or, or whatever, okay? Normally, what we do is we have to purchase the actual equipment and that equipment is yours. Nowadays, okay, even products are packaged as a service. Labs can be packaged as a service for, for a few years where you can use and return after that. So all these are very, very uh, interesting ideas that we have. And in the past, people want to minimize costs, okay? Keep costs low, okay? Whereas nowadays, uh, people are, uh, are looking at the maximization of uh, return on capital employed, 
So based on the capital that you have uh, invested, what are you getting back? Okay, so uh, in, in, in principle, okay, we're looking at getting two times the amount of interest, okay, for that, we will, that we will normally get from our investments. So these are some of the, of, of the changes that we are seeing and, and things are becoming very flexible, okay? In terms of production and so on, things are becoming very flexible. So uh, production lines, uh, factories are all becoming very flexible. We are able to customize things, okay, uh, more, more quickly, okay? And also, you can see that organizations are becoming very, very agile, very, very nimble, very, very uh, good at responding to changes that we see around us. Okay, because we have the data now and we are able to analyze things fast. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Now, uh, humanizing in innovation. Okay. Now. So, IR 4.0 is applied, has been applied a lot, a lot in industries. Factories are, are doing it. So, if you visit a factory and so on, okay, you would see not all factories, most factories, most new factories would, would implement IR 4.0. Like in Malaysia, we have got quite a number of factories closing down because what happens is that they are based on old technology, uh, they are based on IR 3.0. So, uh, the investors, okay, the investors are actually. Uh, are not, not, not keen to upgrade to new new technologies because the investment will be very, very high. So as a result, uh, we have seen in the past few years, many factories uh, based on old technologies are closing down because they are no longer relevant. They are no, no longer relevant and the uh, owners are, are, are not ready or not willing to invest. Okay, I think we will see this happening in the next few years around us, okay, where old factories are closing down because of the technologies are being are already obsolete, uh, can't be used anymore and not relevant at the times and new factories are having newer technologies. So if you have the opportunity, do go and visit these uh, factories with new technologies. You'll be able to see how IR 4.0 technologies are being implemented, okay? So uh, over here, I'm just uh, showing some examples of the work that we do in MMU in our university. Okay, we have got a lot of uh, of research that we do uh, with regard to IR 4.0 and digital technologies. But here I'm just picking up a few to just give an idea of uh, what what are the are the things that uh, we do over here and the so called benefits or the possibilities afforded by uh, IR 4.0. So. We we are we we have okay five uh, G technology on campus okay so actually uh we are we we were the first university in Malaysia with with five G technology uh equipment and so on so we have the comp uh, we we work with ZTE okay a telco company to actually uh ensure that our students who are in the engineering program are exposed to five G technology because. 5G technology is being rolled out in Malaysia, and there are a few places with 5G technology, okay, for experimentation and so on. So uh, we were very fortunate to work with, with ZTE. So we are able to test out this technology and our students, okay, are able to, to set up the, the base, okay, and, and all, all this equipment, okay, which is very, very limited in supply, okay. But uh, with these technologies and so on, we are able, okay, to, to have a more, we are able to have more connectivity, okay, and more, a, a small, smarter environment, okay. Example, okay, uh, with the 5G technology that we have, okay, we are able to have a lot of robots, uh, a lot of robots, okay, uh, to, to do specific tasks, okay. So some of the, uh, applications are in our smart urban farming that you can see there okay in the middle smart urban farm farming we, we use drones and so on okay to actually uh, to actually uh, monitor and also we use uh, sensors and robots okay to, to monitor the farm and so on uh, the, the, the not not the farm the, the uh, nutrients and, and, and conditions of the of these uh, farms. So we have got indoor farm, we have got outdoor farm. Okay, so we it, it's a it, 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 it's it, it's a 
it's a test concept that we are yeah, we're working with uh, the industry to see uh, how we can implement technology to produce uh, better yield from the farming process. Okay, so uh, so so we have got we have converted a few of our classrooms into in uh, indoor uh, farm whereby we do vertical farming and we use all the sensors to actually monitor. Uh, the 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 what the, the amount of fertilizer used, the lighting and so on to ensure faster growth, okay, and better quality vegetables and so on, okay. So uh, when people visit visit we visit we, we visit our university, okay, we, we sometimes give free vegetables because we we harvest from from these farms, okay. But uh, the the output from these farms we 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 give uh, our students, okay, who are from the lower income group, they get. They take the they, they they get the vegetables and they sell it and they they get the income and they use it uh, to help them okay uh, with their living costs and so on on campus. So although these are technological product pro, uh, projects, we also look at the CSR element to help our students okay who are from the lo lower income group to help them survive and also um, uh, cover their costs living. In university okay so smart urban farming is uh, one protect one application of the of the technologies that we have if you look at the second box box we have got ai and, and artificial intelligence and analytics okay so um we have a, a, a lot of projects in um, ai analytics because at mmu we are very our computer science program is i think uh, very very popular and and most of the companies are, uh, prefer hiring our graduates because they are very, very hands-on and, and they've got the skills that are required by the industry. So this uh, project that we have, okay, is work, we work with Ainka. Ainka is a healthcare uh, lab, okay? So what we do is we, we, we try to analyze the, 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 the data, okay, that they have, okay, and we, we we give them real time processing, okay, of 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 whatever data or applications that they want, okay. So as a result, they are able to respond better, okay, and faster, uh, to the industry, okay, and they, and they, and and, they, and 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 the projects that they do on campus, okay, will, will uh, they are they are good will be will then be applied to their projects in industry. The fourth example that, that, that I have here, Digital Home, okay, is actually uh, an interesting project that we have because it's, uh, it, 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 it creates the smart home, okay? And the smart home that we create, we created, or digital home that we created was actually a project that started 15 years ago, okay? So 15 years ago, the technologies were very, very basic. But now, okay, the whole house is... Uh, the, the whole smart home okay is fully functional we are able to control uh, the various things that we have in the smart home with the, with the with iot and so on and more importantly we embed uh, different innovations that we have so for example for example uh, in the smart home we can we can also uh, sense okay uh robo if intruders in the house okay how do we do it? Because our IT people, okay, they, they are good with uh, biometrics. Biometrics. So biometrics normally we, we use our fingerprint, okay, our mata, our retina to recognize whether whether am I Gerald or is that Doctor City or whatever, okay. But um, what our our researchers do is they can recognize people from the way people walk. Chara berjalan. When people walk the gate and so on, they can recognize. So oh, this is this is. Uh, Dr. Gerald, this is Dr. Siti Aliza. It can, they can recognize the people. So when they see somebody that is walking different from the people that are the occupants of the house, okay, then they can flag, flag off as an alert. So that's a security application that they have. Another application that we have is the uh, elderly. It can detect people who fall down, fall detection. So if let's say ada orang tua di rumah, terjatuh atau apa, no? The, the sensors will, will give an, a, a warning, okay, so that people will know that there's someone who may have fallen down at home. So these are some of the various applications and all these are possible, okay, 
because of the network technologies that we have, okay, the, the sensors and all and all these are examples of IR 4.0 and how it affects us. Okay, so there are many more applications, but I, I won't go on to all these examples. And finally, okay, uh, technology is important, but uh, in MMU, we also believe that the other policy aspects and the social science aspects of technology is also very important. Okay, so uh, we work very closely with the uh, MCM, C is multimedia and communication, multimedia and communications, okay, Malaysia, communications and multimedia commission, Suruhanjaya Komunikasi Malaysia, okay, uh, and, and we work with them, okay, to come up with cyber law, okay, cyber law, for example, cyber bullying, okay, so nowadays we see a lot of, a lot of uh, youngsters, okay, going online, okay, uh, communicating using social media, Facebook, uh, TikTok, uh, or, or even Instagram and so on. Okay. But what happened is that there is a lot of cyber bullying going on. Okay. So uh, we are working, uh, our lawyers in MMU, okay, are working closely with the people in the government to come up with a policy and draft, okay, that will be coming up, that will be, that will be tabled in the parliament, okay, to become a law. Menjadi undang-undang baru, okay. So these are some of the some of the things that we do, okay. If we with regard to uh, IR four point zero, and these are very very interesting things that we do. But I, I believe, okay, many universities all around the world, including uh, your university, are doing this, okay. But maybe you are you 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 are not you are not aware of what your 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 professors are doing. But there are a lot of interesting things that are going around, going on around the world with regard to IR 4.0, okay? Now, so what are the challenges, okay? What are the challenges, okay? Because uh, I, I, I felt that uh, I wanted to touch a bit about, about you as students, okay? Because uh, the future ahead is very, very challenging, okay? It, it, it brings a lot of promises, a lot of potential for us, okay? However, okay, we have to have the right mindset and to be ready, for the future, okay. So if you look, uh, you look, you look around us and so on, okay. You 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 would see that a lot of people are saying that the jobs are changing. It's true, memang. The jobs out there are changing a lot. The future of jobs will be very very different from what your your father your mother has been doing in the, are doing now, okay. Because the nature of work has also changed, okay. You see that from IR three point zero to IR four point zero. Things are very, very different. Okay. So if we look on, on, on the screen now, on the on, on the left and on the right, okay, you have got uh, the future jobs and the jobs that will be declining in, in, in the future. Okay. So repetitive tasks, for example, data entry club, uh, admin, admin, bookkeeping, uh, uh, and so on, all these jobs will be declining. These jobs will be declining. Okay. This type of jobs will be declining in the future. Okay, those manual works will tend to decline. However, the jobs that will be growing and in, that will be in demand, okay, are the ability to analyze data, to analyze data, data scientists, how the ability to play with data, okay, uh, AI, okay, big data specialists, digital marketing and strategy specialists, okay. So, for example, uh, I, I spoke about Shopee and so on. What Shopee does in terms of the management of the supply chain, value chain, are all very, very important, okay, elements of marketing. So, in the future, okay, digital marketing and digital strategy will be very, very uh, important. Automation, okay. So, uh, nowadays, which I'm uh, filling up the form, okay, checking the form and so on. All these things, okay, don't need people to do anymore, okay. So what, um, what people do nowadays is they use uh, robots, okay, or, or 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 RPA, robotic process automation, okay. It's a uh, like UI path and so on. If you can, if you have time, you can download or maybe you already experts in it, okay. You can you can do all these things, okay, uh, repetitive things, okay. By, by 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 setting it in in, 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 in the application and they'll be able it will be able to do it 
for you automatically without any uh, intervention from you. So these are very, very interesting things, okay? And uh, you can see over your database, project managers, okay? Security, all these are, are the roles of, uh, are the future roles that will be in higher demand, okay? Uh, if you look on the right hand side, it leaves that accountants, auditors will be affected. Um, just to clarify, accountants and auditors will be required. Okay, but nowadays what happens is that more many of the accountants okay do very very manual tasks. They do tasks that can be replaced by robots. But the part where accountants and auditors are required is when they need to think. Okay, so the analysis part and thinking part. Accountants and auditors are still required because machines are not able to overcome to, to do that to do that roles okay for the time being. Now, like when you look at all these things, okay, a lot of you may say maybe it's not possible, you no, know, this is uh, it won't happen, and so on. Okay. Just to share with you all, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, okay, when I was a student, they were saying, Oh, computers can auto update update by itself, you know. Last time. Whenever we want to use our computer, okay, we will need to constantly update, update, update. We have to download the kan butang, update. We wait for satu jam, dua jam, okay, then okay, close, we start, okay. So we have to do this maybe every month, okay, in order for our computer to be performing very well, okay, supaya lancar kegunaan computer. But now, but what happens now is that we don't have to do this because all the updating is done automatically. 20 years ago, when, 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 when my, 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 my professor told me that this will happen you know, in class, he laughed. He said, it won't happen. It's impossible. Say, wow, well, dream, dream on. Okay? But it's happening now. So likewise, okay, all these changes that we're talking about that will be happening in the future, it will happen. Okay? And it may happen faster than we can ever imagine. Okay, so um, in the World Economic Forum's Jobs of Tomorrow report, okay, what they have said, okay, is that uh, these are the areas that will be growing, okay. So there will be new job areas, okay, that will be coming out. For example, data, AI, content production, and so on and so forth. But bear in mind, okay, that it's a combination of skills. It's a combination of skills, okay. So. In order for us to prepare ourselves for the future, we must have the right mix of skills that the industry requires. Okay, so like for example, in the past when people study marketing, they only study marketing theory itself. Okay, but now marketing, if you want to be a marketing expert, you must understand marketing theory. You must have the technology part. You must know how to use online application. You need to know how to do e-commerce and so on. So. It is a combination, okay, of marketing skills and technical skills together to become successful in the future, okay. So the the same thing goes with you. We need to ensure that we pick up technical skills, digital skills to be relevant in what we do, okay. So it could be, for example, your data analysis skills, okay, being able to analyze data, okay, fast. So the ability to play around with Power BI, even Microsoft uh, Excel, okay, those are, are, are good uh, starting start, uh, launch pads, okay, for you to gain better awareness of these skills and technologies, okay. So uh, the what are the other skills, or personal skills or soft skills that are important, okay? The skills that are required by industry is analytical skills and innovation. Okay, so try to focus on your analytical, analytical thinking and innovation. Okay, active learning, complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, leadership, and so on and so forth. So all these soft skills are very, very important. Okay, to enable you to be uh, employable and highly sought after in the future. Okay, so... Uh, Studies is important, but at the same time, ensure that you develop all these skills, okay? And these skills are uh, best developed 
when you take part in activities. Okay, you take part in activities organized by your professors, by your university, take part in them. Competitions, okay, take part in them. Okay, even if you don't win, it's good. It's okay because you learn from that process. Okay, and that process helps you a lot to be a better person. Okay, and it will prepare you for the industry. So try to expose yourself to all these. Okay, and these are the skills that employers are looking for. Okay, so um, again, okay, uh, like what I said before, these are the type of skills that uh, employers require, cross-cutting skills, okay? So if let's say we're doing product marketing, okay, we need to, 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 to know about data and AI. We need to know about people and culture, marketing, product development and sales. So it's a combination of skills. It's no longer very, very uh, specific in one area itself. So you need to broaden your horizons, learn other areas because the application of various knowledge and skills is what is required in the future. Okay. So um, similarly, okay, the future, uh, the future jobs require a, a fluid mix of skills. Okay. So that means try to broaden your horizons, like what I said before, pick up knowledge and skills from different areas okay so for example you may be in battery science okay that is a core area but at the same time try to gain uh, some skills and knowledge in other areas okay technical knowledge skills analytical innovation skills entrepreneurial skills or whatever try to get and build those skills in tandem with your core skill okay your core skill is very important but at the same time, you need to grow and develop the other skill areas so that you'll be ready for the future. Okay, because the future will be very, very different from what we have now. Okay, so we really need to ensure that we are ready for the future. Okay, so um, with that, I conclude. Okay, so in short, I, I, what, what would I like to my, my key message over here is IR 4.0 is a is, uh, drastic change okay from how we did things in the past okay um there are better lots of opportunities okay to for everybody for customers okay for humanity there are a lot of potential benefits and we are enjoying these benefits now however there are a lot of challenges okay in terms of making sure that we stay relevant because if we don't remain relevant then we'll be in trouble because we, we will lose our jobs or we will not get a job okay so for you uh young 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 university students over there okay i believe okay uh the future is all yours to seize okay study hard okay gain as much skills as possible okay try to be as flexible as versatile pick pick up skills okay uh, in other areas like for example technology innovation entrepreneurship these are the skills okay that will enhance your future growth and your career opportunities okay in the future and uh, do uh, make full use of whatever opportunity that the university that your university provides okay competitions training and so on go for it because all these activities are developing your skills okay so uh, with that, I thank you and I welcome questions that you all may have. Thank you, Prof. Hirad. This is a very inspiring, yeah? Uh, uh, this very interesting uh, materials you uh, give us. Uh, we have several questions. Uh, yeah, uh, the first question uh, is from... Uh, from uh, uh, Miss Jessie, yeah. Her question is, uh, Prof. Gerard, very glad to meet you this morning. Now I'm pursuing a doctoral program. And that's the topic. Help me to arrange my research proposal about uh, the business uh, transformations in SMEs for livestock product. So I have question for you. There are two questions. The first question is how the first step for small business shifting from conventional to adopted 
business intelligence. While we know that human resource, resources abilities is still low and lack of knowledge about technology. That is the first question. Okay, and then is in the chat group, ma? Huh? Yeah, uh, uh, she wrote in the group chat, uh, room chat. Okay, JC, right? Okay. Yeah. Let me read it. Okay, uh -huh. uh, basically, JC, thanks for your question. Okay, uh, yes, it's very true that uh, lack of knowledge is one challenge. Okay, one challenge that we have. Okay, um, okay, yeah, we got the first question. Okay, okay, I, I believe. Um, I believe there is a greater awareness okay, on the potential of uh, this uh, on, on the use of uh, technologies, okay, how, how companies can use these technologies for SMEs and so on and so forth. So like um, I believe governments, okay, governments, for example, like in Malaysia, and I believe in Indonesia also, they have got a lot of, of these um, programs, okay to upskill, okay, and to, to help SMEs, okay, to be ready, okay, to be ready with, 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 their, with, their, with their capability to, to adopt these technologies, okay. So, uh, like, for example, for example, uh, uh, we have got uh, schemes, okay, a micro, my, micro business support schemes by the government, whereby whereby they give funding for platform also. That means they give, uh, they give uh, money to these small, small, small businesses and so on, okay, to, be, to, to purchase, uh, to, 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 to subscribe to the platform and they provide training and support. Okay, so, so since these are some of the, of the initiatives that, uh, that, are, that are being uh, so-called deployed by the government to help, to help, to help all these uh, SMEs, okay, to to upskill and learn, get the skills that they don't have. Also, a lot of uh, universities, okay, in Malaysia are doing a lot, okay, uh, in terms of our CSR to help SMEs, okay. So, like for example, like my faculty, okay, we do a lot of uh, free CSRs, okay, with uh, online CSRs with for 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 businesses and so on to help them. Uh, Upskill, and I believe I believe okay. Uh, although it may look, it may seem difficult. Okay, uh, many people now realize that if they don't adopt technology and all these online business skills and so on, they will be left out. Okay, so I know of a lot of um, home business people, people that do the uh, do cooking at home, bakery, cakes and so on. Okay. And sell online, okay. They they are actually uh, following YouTube, for example. They follow YouTube videos on how to boost their 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 their, 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 their sales and so on. So they know they are picking up all these skills um, available online through YouTube, and also they are going for courses. Okay, so I know of, of of people around me that actually are going for weekend classes, online courses, or whatever to upskill themselves. So the awareness is there. People know that they must go online to do the business, okay? And, and, and they know that they don't have adequate knowledge. So they, they improve their skills. They improve the skills on, on, on how to do it. And it's very important that people improve their skills and not get someone to do it. I know of cases of people whereby they don't know how to do the account for, for Shopee or Lazada. They call someone to do it for them. Account is there, but they, they don't know how to do it. You know, so it becomes a problem because you have an account, a seller account, but you cannot uh, do business over there, you know. And uh, that friend of mine, okay, kept on telling me, you know, he wants to do business on, on Lazada, on, on Shopee. So we helped him to come up with the account and so on, but he can't do it. He can't do it. So we, ad we advise him, why don't you just sell it using WhatsApp, okay? So... He said, no, 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 WhatsApp cannot, cannot make business and so on. But, but, but we, told him, we, we taught him how to, 
how to use the WhatsApp, how to use the uh, WhatsApp story and so on, you know, and, and to share with, with the group and with the, with, 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 with the contacts, okay? So he's doing good business now. So I think, okay, number one, awareness is, is important to upskill. Number two, use what technology you're comfortable with, okay? Don't adopt a technology that is beyond your ability because some of the technologies are quite complex. If it's beyond your reach and, and, and scope, then don't go for it. Use, use technologies that, that can help you do business. Don't you adopt technologies that will be there, but give no, uh, no effect or impact to you because you don't know how to use it. Okay? The second question that, uh, that, okay, that she has, as, as we know, Okay. When we want to enlighten adoption level for so how important? Okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, Jay-Z. Uh, research has shown that pandemic like this, okay, COVID-19 pandemic, okay, the pandemic, the, the corona pandemic, okay, has actually accelerated adoption of technologies. Okay. Uh, basically, what we are experiencing now in Malaysia and Indonesia, okay, one and a half years after the corona pandemic, okay, we can see that the adoption level of technology, uh, we in this one and a half years, we have actually perhaps moved five to ten years ahead of time. Okay, so generally, uh, online or online businesses technology adoption has has somewhat um, fast forwarded by five to ten years. Okay, and people. Uh, are becoming uh, are using technology that that they wouldn't have used. Okay, for example, um, in the past, I won't be doing this with you all. You know, we won't be we won't be here virtually listening to virtual webinar. You know, but now we are here. Okay, in the past, if, if we want to have a webinar, people will say it's not effective, it's not bagus, and so all, all kinds of reasons will come up. People will, people will not do it. But now we, we are doing it because we have no choice. Okay, so. Um, due to the pandemic, like like COVID nineteen, okay, this has accelerated the adoption of technologies, and 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 from from what we can observe, it has fast forwarded forwarded things five to ten years, okay, five to ten years. So we would only be doing this maybe in five years in, in two o two o two seven or whatever. But thanks to um, somewhat thanks to to, to to what has happened, okay, we are able to do this uh, now. No one would have imagined, okay, students would be studying at home for one and a half years in the past, okay? But with COVID-19, whether we like it or not, we are making it work, okay? Online exams, okay? Last time, okay, in my university, online exams, tak boleh, tak boleh, tidak boleh. Okay, now, everything is online exams, okay? And the online exams, that we, the, the, the software that we use are so good, okay? Because they're even better than than, 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 than humans, okay? Because even your, if your eyes look up or whatever, it will, it will, it will detect it and will, 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 will send an alert warning. So students can't even think about cheating because the, the technology is so good over there. So yes, okay, uh, we are able to, to uh, adoption levels have increased a lot. Okay, let me go past. There are many more questions, huh? Yes, we have a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, Linda, Linda is the next one. Okay. Social media is a marketing tool that is quite influential in selling products, okay, new products. But there are some areas that we can't reach. Then what are the tips so that we can market these products and reach remote areas when there is no internet? Okay. Okay, uh, a key marketing principle that we have to remember is that uh, reach is important, okay? So uh, if our communication or our promotion can't reach them, okay, then that will be a challenge, okay? That means we, we obviously can't use social media for, for that 
segment or that segment on the market. Okay, so so uh, <clears throat> a classic example. Okay, for for example, for example, okay, uh, if let's say okay, we have got uh, people that are that are living in a jungle, like in Malaysia, we got orang asli, okay, or, or orang asal who are living in the jungle, okay, no, 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 no TV, no electricity, no, 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 no phone connection over there. So it's no, there is no way that uh, any uh, TV advertisement can target them because they don't have, they don't have, TV, they don't have access to television in the past. Okay, so if you want to target these communities, okay, then you will really need to to look at what alternative or traditional or what other promotion strategies that you may want to use that can reach them. Okay, so it's either you bring technology to them. Okay, or you bring the, the, the promotion to them without technology. Okay, because the medium is very important. Uh, the medium must be able to reach them, okay, for you to, to achieve what you want to do. So uh, if social media cannot reach them, okay, then we, you will need to see what are the tools that can reach them. So you may need to use traditional tools, okay, traditional tools to reach this. If this these segments okay that are not uh, accessible to to other uh, forms of uh, so called uh, advertising, the same thing happens. Okay, for example, uh, nowadays if you want to target uh, uh, professionals, professionals, okay, working professionals in Malaysia, uh, TV is not a uh, uh, TV advertisements is becoming less less popular because professionals okay are spending lesser and lesser time watching television okay professionals if you want to reach professionals working okay, professionals the way is number one uh through online advertisement social media and also web banners on, on, on websites and radio radio has become very very popular because people are stuck in their cars Okay, people are traveling, but now radio is not popular during the pandemic because people cannot drive. Okay, so uh, people can't go out driving because of the, of the lockdown and so on that we have in, in Malaysia. So internet is becoming a very, very good, uh, important uh, platform for advertising and promotion. Radio is also popular, but now because of the pandemic, uh, it, it has gone down. TV has gone up now. Okay, but once things go back to normal, TV will be less, le less important for working professionals, radio will go up. Will go up. Okay, so uh, that is how I would uh, answer that question. Okay, as we know that the pandemic has, has impacted the economic sector, the market, how, so how the tips for making advantage of the opportunity that exists? Okay. Uh, for food businesses, okay, for food businesses, okay. Um, in Malaysia, we notice that a lot of businesses are, are surviving, okay, are surviving, but struggling because uh, the, the, the sales has dropped a lot, okay. So companies that survive are companies that are able to do, uh, are able to, to adapt their model, okay, adapt the model. So, example, uh, the, food, the food sector, delivery is important, okay? So, some restaurants, okay, they don't want to do delivery. They want to do pickup and so on. So, if you want to, to, to order the products, you must go to the restaurant, make the order, wait for the food, then you pay and then you, you, you go home, okay? Those businesses like that, okay, are doing very badly now due to the pandemic because they are, they have not adapted their model much. However, a lot of uh, businesses, food businesses, have gone online. They have used Grab Food, Food Panda. I think you will you will, you would have Food Panda in Indonesia. I think okay. So they, they everything has gone on, on this platform. So everything they 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 they, they, they have gone on Food Panda. Grab food, okay, and all the other food apps, okay. So 
people are able to buy food from them. Okay, so their business is somewhat okay. Some companies, okay, some food businesses, they have their own delivery. Yeah, they have their own riders. Okay, so uh, instead of uh, because some of them they don't they don't want to pay to to the platform. Okay, like uh, food panda or grab food or whatever. So as a result, what, what they do is that they have a team of their own riders. Okay, so if, if you want to buy something, okay, you can the order will pass to the rider. The rider then will contact you and say, okay, your order is how much? Uh, I'll bring it to your house and so on and so forth. So these are some of the uh, adaptations that we have seen in the market. Okay, some of the adaptations that we have seen in the market and uh, they are doing well. Another example, another example, hotels. Hotels are badly hit. Okay, so a lot of hotels to talk, close, close business because they, 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 they have no income at all. Okay, so what some hotels do is they become a quarantine center. They become a quarantine center. So that means, for example, if someone in the house is COVID positive and, and you are afraid that this person may infect the family or whatever, this person goes to the hotel and stay in the hotel for for, for 14 days, that's one way. Another way is quite a number of hotels in, um, in Kuala Lumpur and in big cities in Malaysia, what they have done is they have converted their hotel business from nightly, nightly stays to monthly stays. So as a result, okay, people are now staying in hotel, like Sewa Rumah or Sewa Bili like that, for one month. So that change in model allows them to stay on allow hotels to remain in business, you know? So the key word here is to be agile, okay? To react, okay, fast. So those who are slow, there, was, there are some people that, 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 that refuse to change their model, okay? As a result, they are out of business, okay? So there is a need, okay, to quickly uh, adapt and use whatever technologies and different approaches that you have to get your money, okay? Like for example, um, uh, hotels, restaurants, okay? They have problems also with, with food and so on. So like the, the hotels in, 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 in my, my city, okay? They have a lot of delivery. They have a lot of delivery. Tapi the problem with hotels is the uh, makanan is very mahal in hotels. So they, they, they have to lower the price of the food to be competitive, okay? Okay, so Linda, uh, Divya. Divya says, okay, I may have been like Okay, uh, Divya, uh, when you start your, 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 your business online, okay, uh, normally the initial phase will be challenging. The initial phase will be challenging for you to, 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 to grow your business, okay? So most uh, online shoppers or online sellers, okay, they will, they will take maybe like a month or so to actually um, get the business moving, okay? So the key thing that, uh, the key element that is very important in online business is to be clear about what, you want to sell, okay? Your products. Uh, your products that you sell have to be related to each other, okay? Don't sell only two items or two items, okay? Sell a few items, maybe let's say 10 or 20 items. But these 12, 10 or 20 items are all related in one area, okay? So for example, if you're selling computer products, they are all computer-related products, okay? You start with a 10 or 20 item portfolio. Uh, you may want to... Getting your first buy is very slow, okay? So you have to be patient, okay? Try to promote your product to your friends, okay? And your contacts. And once you get the buy, make sure you service that buy, that that purchase well, okay? Pro, uh, provide good service, get good ratings, okay? Once you get good ratings, then you see that the, the, the momentum will pick up. Okay? The momentum will pick up. 
most uh, sellers that don't do well online, okay, is because they only sell one or two items, okay, and as a result, they don't get the 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 the, the they don't build their credibility and they don't get the volume, okay. So uh, be smart, okay, be smart, okay, and also uh, choose the products well. For example, okay, if you want to sell, okay, let's say a uh, t-shirt and also maybe an anting anting and subang or whatever, which is better? The earring is better because the earring, okay, you don't have sizes. You can have various designs, but you don't have to worry about sizing. But if you're where you if, if you are selling things like for example t-shirt or whatever, you have to worry about sizing, okay. So you have one design, then you have so many sizes to worry about. And for every size, you must have stock some more, you know? So it becomes complicated. So try to start off, okay, simple first. Once you have got more volume in business, then you can move into other areas that are more complicated, okay? So don't bite off more than you can chew, okay? Start small and manageable, okay? Remain focused. Give, give good service, okay? Don't think that uh, by starting online business, okay, uh, you'll be rich very fast. It will take time. You will be rich, but it will take time to reach that after a few months and so on, okay? With effort and also perseverance, okay? Because a lot of people, they start, after satu minggu, they say, I give up. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Then you will for sure not be rich, okay? You need to plan and persevere, okay? You start small, start small. So a lot of uh, my students who are actually doing very good businesses, they start small because they do it when they are students, okay? So when, when they are students, they, they, they sell baju, they, 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 they get handbag or whatever they sell. They, they make small amounts of money, you know? And as a result, once they graduate, okay, they realize that what they have now is can be a business. So they focus full time on that business, okay, and they really make good money, okay. But if they started from zero when they graduated, then it will be a different story, because you know you have no money. You want the money to come in, it won't come in so fast, okay. So play with it, okay. Uh, experiment with it, okay. Uh, over time, okay, it, it can be a viable, viable business. Okay, it can be a viable business. You may want to use vouchers and so on and so on and so forth, but it will eat into your margin. So you may want to use some vouchers, uh, divya in the beginning stage to build a business, but don't overdo on giving vouchers and so on because it will hit your bottom line. Okay. Okay, uh, Ahmad. Ahmad says how uh, in complex, okay. My question is what should small scale do to realize in the Okay. Okay, uh, Ahmad, uh, okay, you, you, you have got a very, very interesting question, okay. Now, uh, with IR 4.0, the technologies are very, can be expensive. But like what I mentioned just now, uh, we have got uh, machine shops or factories for rent, okay? I'm not sure whether this is uh, becoming popular in Indonesia or not. Malaysia, we have a bit coming up in the US and so on. This is something very, very popular, okay? The machine shops, factory shops and so on. So people are able to rent the services, okay? So the rental of services is something that uh, we, you can look at, okay? So uh, it's not possible to buy all this equipment, it's expensive. So look at ways to work with, collaborate with factories because some factories, they may have downtime. So they, you can ask them to produce for you, okay? So like, for example, uh, I've got students in the past, okay, that uh, work, uh, that, that came up with an entrepreneurship project that, that work on uh, herbal tea, herbal tea, okay? So they... They, they came up with uh, Kachit Fatima, all, all those kind of tea and so on. So what they do is that they don't have the factory, but they, they, they approach a factory 
to actually uh, do the packing for them and the production for them and so on. You know, so the processing and the packing is done by a big factory that produces for well-known brands, okay? And they have to pay a fee for it. And it's quite affordable. It's quite affordable, okay? Because uh, the university, we give them money to do the project. So it wasn't so much money. It's only a few thousand ringgit that we, that we give them. So they were able to do the production, the packaging, and it came out like a normal, like, like, like a commercial product and so on. And yeah, it's possible to start off uh, slow, okay? Uh, your last part is that, okay, what to focus on? Okay, what to focus on depends on what you are good at. Okay, uh, what do you have access to, Ahmad? Okay, so if you, have, if you are good in um, IT or whatever, okay, then you may want to do something along those lines. Okay, and but at the end of the day, okay, you need to do what you like to do. Okay, if you don't have interest in that product or service, okay then it is very difficult okay, to maintain that, uh, that drive over a long period. You need to like what you do. Okay? So do something that you like, something that you have access to, okay? and look around and see what is the environment like. Okay? So like for, example, for example, one of my students was actually a, came from a fisherman family. His family are all fishermen, okay, in a in a kampung, kampung is a kampung area, dekat pantai, okay. So he he studied marketing, okay. So after after studying uh, marketing and so on, okay, he went to work and so on. Then he realized, okay, that what his family is doing, catching fish, can be a good online business, okay, because people in the city area, uh, they want fresh fish, okay. And we know like in the city area, we don't get very fresh fish. Our fish are actually frozen fish that have been kept for some time. So what he did was, he came, he came up with an online business delivering fish that is caught by his family, okay, to people in Kuala Lumpur, okay. And that became a, a very, very uh, good business, okay. So that became an online business, but it was... What, I, what my point over here is do something that is re relevant to you with appropriate demand in the market. Okay? So see what you are good at, what you have access to, and what the, the market requires. And make sure that there is this match, okay? When you get this match, then you'll be able to, to come up with this product and so on. Okay? Okay. Uh, Harry, Harry. Yeah, last question, oh. I think. Harry asks, okay, what, what we must prepare and what skills we must have to, to face challenges? Okay. If you don't want to be replaced by robots, what should we do? That's a very good question, Harry. Okay. If we don't want to be replaced by robots, we should not be a robot, right? Okay, that's my answer, okay. So basically, don't do repetitive things, okay? That means if your work if what we are doing is being very repetitive, okay, day in, day out, the same thing over and over again, okay, and it can, something that is potentially replaceable by a robot, then we are at risk, okay. So we, the, 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 the advantage of us humans over robots, okay, is our ability to think, to analyze, and to process, okay. So use, make sure we use this ability to think, analyze, and to process well. Then if we are doing that in our work, then we will not be replaced by robots. Okay? Analysis. Playing with data. Okay? Not tabulating, like, let's say, kira, kira, total, total, that one robot can take over. But manipulating the data to come up with, with knowledge, okay? So that we can make decision. That is the thing that we should do, okay? So as long as we can use our brain to do work that creates more value, then we won't be replaced. Like what I said before, accountants. Accountants, those accountants that do work that require thinking, 
to analyze, to interpret, they are safe. Tapi the accountants that do the checking, checking one by one, now that one will be potentially replaced by robots. Okay, so anything that requires thinking skills and so on, okay, focus on that. Okay, so technical skills like uh, Power BI, data skills, Excel, and so on. These are very, very important skills that we require. Okay, so uh, explore all these technologies. And most of you are graduate students. So as graduate students, okay, your thinking skills are good. Okay, so like for example, in, in, in Malaysia, in Malaysia, the challenge that we have is that a lot of students don't want to do masters or PhD because they say that uh, they they don't see the benefit of graduate studies. That's a problem that we have. They think that graduate studies is a waste of time. Okay. And they won't they won't learn much. But luckily there, there are there are some students who, who, who pursue the graduate studies. And after they after they completed the graduate studies, they realize okay that completing a master's or whatever okay, pro, prepares them better for the workforce. Okay. They are able to analyze things better, okay? They become more confident with themselves, okay? So I think like for the graduate students here, once you complete your graduate studies, okay, you will see the difference in yourself. You'll be more confident, okay? You'll be able to articulate better and you'll be able to reason and use your, you, you, use your God-given brains, okay? In a more productive manner. And you'll see things or problems, okay? very very differently and it will it will really really uh, be a good investment for your future okay so um uh harry okay so that i would say yes, one more <laughs> question yeah. Yeah, yeah from christian michael okay one yeah. more question okay very long question <laughs> okay in the era of ir4.0 technology progress will be faster it will also affect various sectors in country how can room okay number number two what things should be developed improved by running or river okay uh, it will never be balanced I think uh Christian Michael I will, um, ideally some people will, will say that they want they want the urban and uh, urban and rural to be balanced, but I don't I, I don't think it can ever be balanced. Okay, uh, however, what we could we we, we we could we we could do is to bring opportunities to the rural communities, bring whatever opportunities that are available to rural communities. Okay, or to work with the rural communities, to work with them, okay, so that they will get the economic impacts from e-commerce. Okay, example, example. Huh? Um, we have got in in Sarau, in, in Borneo, in Borneo, okay, we have got um, we have got the highlands, the Kaos, Kaosan Gunung, okay, in, 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 in Sarawak, okay which is very, very far away from, 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 the, from the urban area. It takes around three days by jeep and sampan, by boat to reach the, the, the kampong, okay? Or if you want, you must use a flight and the flight is a very small, small aeroplane and so on, and it's, it's not cheap, okay? So it's very remote, okay? And people over there, uh, what happened is, generally the economic well-being is low, okay? The economic well-being is low, because uh, they are not able to, they, have, they are very, very remote, very right? terpencil, ter, ter, ter you know, in pedalaman. So as a result, there is no economic activity there. Activity there. Internet pun tak, very limited. Tel telco coverage, maybe, yes, okay. So there's, there is very little things that they can do, okay. So there was one group of, uh, of, of students, okay, who went there to volunteer not from MMU, like from other universities. They went there to volunteer to do water pipe, to bring, to, to bring 
to, 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 to do a piping system there at the Kampong to help the, the Kampong people. So when they stayed with the Kampong people, they realized that betul -betul kesian because they have no opportunity and, and the income level is low. So what they did that, what, what they did then, okay, was these students, okay, they came up, they, they created an online company. And this company is called Langit Langit, okay? Langit Langit in Malaysia, okay? So uh, what, what happens over there is that this, this uh, online, this, uh, this company, okay, takes the products from the kampung up there and sells it, okay? Sells it to the wider market. So what they do is that, what, what do they produce over there? They produce uh, beras, beras gunung, uh, padi, padi bukit, okay? So the, 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 the rice okay, that they have there, okay, is very, very uh, organic, no pesticides, okay? So they sell this online rice, okay? This rice online, okay? And there are very various varieties of rice, uh, macam macam jenis, okay? Then they sell also garam, salt, natural salt, okay, highland salt, okay. So they, they, they make their own salt over there, they sell it over the online also, okay. Then a lot of uh, like products like ginger, dried ginger, okay. So as a result of uh, this group going up to the, to the mountains to help them manage their production, you know, and so on and so forth, they will be they are able to sell the extra rice that they produce okay to the urban folk okay and the demand for these products are very very high whenever they get stopped they 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 they, 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 they replenish the, the details online people will buy the rice very very fast so you will always be out of stock so as a result okay the economic uh, well-being of the kampung people improve because now they have money. Dulu, okay, after they, they, they produce the rice and so on, they harvest the rice, extra, they don't know what to do with it. And tak banyak extra also because the production was not uh, effective. So we, we, when this group of people, okay, when they teach them how to do things, how to improve their, their productivity and so on, okay, as a result, they were able to improve their harvest and also improve the economic well-being, okay? So, uh, it's difficult for the rural folk, uh, Christian, to actually do this by themselves, but by working together with other people, okay, they are able, the benefits will be able to spill over to them, okay? Uh, Based on what I see, okay, we can, we, it may not be possible to actually uh, teach them, teach the rural people fully about all these things, but we can bring the benefits to them and work with them, okay? Work with them on, on how to, on how to improve production. For example, okay, uh, in the rural areas, okay, the ginger, the halia that they have, okay, is very very nice because uh, it is organic okay and there is no fertilizer or pesticide that they use so how do they uh, produce ginger they will just tanam the ginger in 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 a, in a jungle and they let it grow for one year after one year they harvest it you know so uh, by 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 teaching them about how to do this in a in a large quantity and so on okay they will be able to enjoy the benefits okay maybe in some communities you can teach them how to do it but it may be too difficult for them okay because we have to buy bear in mind they, are, uh, they have no access technology uh, the infrastructure does not support it much okay so there are a lot of limitations in the rural areas okay but we can help by bringing bringing in this uh, benefit to them but Trying to be equal will be difficult. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, I think that's the last yeah. question. We have been uh, talking a lot, huh, Dr. Siti? Yeah, but it's very important for us. Yeah. It's very nice. Uh, last question for, from me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
we see that your uh, university projects covers a lot of areas and uh, lots of aspects. So yeah, uh, here I represent uh, my students. Uh, is it possible for us to have uh, nothing to do with uh, IT yeah, to pursue uh, like a postgraduate uh, study in your university? Sorry, can, 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 you, can, you, can you repeat? Oh uh, yeah, uh, is it possible for our students with no background in IT to pursue uh, some, uh, some of the uh, postgraduate subjects or some postgraduate uh, program in your uh, university? Because uh, we have background in IT. We have a, a, a quite a number of programs uh, in the university, okay? We have got a uh, business, we have got communicate communication, communication. We have got uh, creating multimedia is actually very creating multimedia IT and engineering. So the areas that may be possible will be uh, communication and management. But we have to look at the background and so on the profile. Yeah, yeah. So okay. because uh, because I think I I think like Indonesia, I think the government is sometimes quite strict with the like kind of mass up no entry requirements so we have to look yeah. at the field of study and so but we have business we have got communication we have got law uh mm -hmm. but I, we, we don't have anything in, in sciences but we have we have uh we have bioinformatics we have bioinformatics in the university also under okay. it so so bioinformatics what they do is they use technology for for biology biological purposes yeah oh, so that, okay. yeah this is something yeah. that we have yeah yeah thank you for the information okay uh maybe you have any closing statement for our students so we can um yeah wrap okay. up uh, your information yeah yeah, yeah it, uh thank you very much dr aziza for inviting me it has been a, a very yeah, long session. Okay, sorry for sorry for taking so much of your time. Okay, but thanks for the interesting questions. Okay, so it was uh, it's nice to get the questions and also very very uh, thought provoking questions. Thank you for uh these interesting questions. I think this uh this could be perhaps one one of the few sessions with very very good questions. Thanks for that. Okay, and um, like what I said just now. Okay, um. Uh, we need to equip ourselves, okay, and, and like like what uh, uh, our friend said, okay, what should we do so that we are not replaced by robots, okay, so we need to acquire skills in areas that robots cannot do, okay, so we really need to use our intelligence, our analysis, our thinking skills, okay, and try to broaden our hor horizons, okay, uh, try to gain skills in other areas because that will be very, very useful. Okay, that will be very useful and it will really enhance your career prospects and it will give you a lot of opportunity to move around in your career okay so uh use whatever opportunity you have to gain new skills okay new whether it's it skills entrepreneurship skills okay or leadership skills obtain these skills okay and take part and expose yourself to as many activities as possible Okay, and I also I I I I I I I, I believe no, uh, you all should be very thankful to the university and Dr. Sisi Aziza for doing initiatives like this to expose okay, uh, all of all of you to different things that are happening around us, because by knowing and seeing things around us okay, uh, we we will we will grow wiser, okay. So once the pandemic is over, which will take some time okay, unfortunately, do feel free uh. To let us know if you want to drop by our university and so on or whatever any activities and so on we welcome you okay and i also definitely look forward to going back to indonesia to visit indonesia and enjoy the wonderful food and to meet all of you again okay so that's all from me and i wish you all the best thank you thank you very much uh yeah after pandemic you can visit us in the Brawijaya university yes of course uh, 
uh, I do appreciate uh, your material about on top tens of skills of the 2025. Yeah. We appreciate uh, your time and your rich knowledge that you share with us. Uh, thank you very much. And students, uh, yeah, please uh, feel free to talk with uh, Prof. Gerard after. <laughs> yeah, can, can we still contact? you after this uh, yeah 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 thank Possible. you very much okay you okay thank you all uh now uh time to close our seminars uh, thank you very much and very good morning keep thank healthy you. and stay. take care everyone stay safe thank you yeah thank you prof Yerab. thank you okay students uh yeah now uh yeah Ketua kelas bisa mengumpulkan report ya siapa saja yang uh, bertanya tapi saya sendiri sudah punya sebetulnya ya. Oke, okay, terima kasih atas perhatiannya. Jangan lupa untuk absen. Nanti saya juga akan membuka absen di Gapura. Jangan lupa untuk absen. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Bu. Terima kasih.